In this video we want to talk about the buying motives of individuals. Clearly the, my, the buying motives will vary from one person to the next because people have different circumstances and different backgrounds and a different approaches to, to purchasing. But the marketing personnel within a business need to have some idea of what it is that uh, goes to make up the purchasing decision. So virtually all the factors that we can imagine that influence into the purchasing decision need to be recognized. It's not that the marketing department can do anything about many of these, it just simply needs to be aware that these are factors which help to determine the purchasing decision. Buyer's behaviour is influenced by many factors which determine the buyer's purchasing decision. There are many factors that lie behind the purchasing decision. Marketers can develop a marketing mix which focuses directly on the customer, but they can only do this if they have an idea of what it is that the customer has in mind when purchasing the product. What factors lie behind the purchasing decision as well? What, what is it? that uh, enables the customer to make the decision to purchase or in a sense not to purchase. A reason to make a purchase may vary from one person uh, to another person or from one product to another product. Individuals have different preferences and needs. That's the way the human race is. We are different and we like to be different. We like to have our individuality and to show off our individuality. So we have various factors that lie behind the purchasing decision. Some of them may be based on fashion, design, could be income, it could be where we live, our backgrounds, the school we went to, our friends. There are many factors that need to be considered. Marketing must be able to adapt to changing customer needs and be able to understand factors that influence the buying process. So marketers have a big job. They need to try to determine what is it that leads to the buying decision and what factors facilitate the buying decision and also what factors inhibit the buying decision, what factors can put it off or stop it. So marketers need to try to work out the set of factors and try to work on those set of factors in a positive way to try and encourage sales. So we can imagine personal influences being demographic and situational, involvement, economic. We'll talk about these uh, later in, in this set of notes. But we can imagine it in summary form that the personal circum uh, circumstances could be demographic, it could be age or uh, it could be occupation or there can be various factors lying behind the purchase decision. And you can see from the just the four points we've got here, demographic, situational, involvement and economic, we can see this is going to be extremely complex and very difficult for the marketers to sort out. We also have psychological influences, perception, motives, learning, attitude, personality. And these are very vague and, and certainly very difficult to measure, if not impossible. But nonetheless, they are important in the buying decision. The perception of the product, how will the product suit the person, how will it fit into uh, the lifestyle of the person, how will it uh, enhance the image of the person? What's the motives for buying? Why do they want the thing? Why do they want to make this purchase? So we can go through all of these psychological influences but you can see they're very vague and yet very important. There are also social influences. Uh, the roles of family and uh, reference groups and social class and cultural and subcultural factors. Sometimes when we make purchases we want uh, other people to praise the decision, to congratulate us on the purchase, to admire what we've just purchased. 
who were doing it for some sort of social recognition. And again, you can see here that this is extremely vague, very difficult to measure, if possible. So marketers have a big job here, trying to work out what is it that lies behind the purchase decision. It may not simply be cheaper price. It may be much more complex. But all of these, when you take them together, they lead to the decision-making process. All of these factors, to whatever extent, some of them may be more important than others, but whatever the factors are, this is what leads to the purchase decision. So we have, first of all, we have a problem recognition. We have somebody who wants something. They want a product. They have to recognize they want it. Unless it's purely impulse to just walk into a shop and say, we will have this. We haven't thought about it before. Now we will purchase. And that does happen. But many times people will think we really could do with an extra whatever or we would like to possess one of these. So we have a, a problem recognition. We have, we have a desire to possess the product and that's recognized. So that initiates the process. But once it's initiated, people will search. Where can I find this product? How much is it? What are its characteristics? Uh, what's its after-sales service? What's its style? What does it look like? And it'll go through the evaluation of various alternatives, different types of product, uh, different variations on the product, I should say, perhaps, um, different styles, different prices, uh, different manufacturers, different warranties. So there'll be a whole process of evaluation. And when that's done, the purchase. And after the purchase, there's the, the post-purchase evaluation. When people have received the product, uh, it's working or it's, it's in situ, then they evaluated. Was it a good purchase? Did we make the right decision? Should we have purchased the other one? And of course, all the way through this, there's feedback. Um, feedback to suppliers, feedback to manufacturers, but there's also feedback from friends and family, perhaps about the purchase. Oh, it was a good idea. No, I don't particularly like it. And various comments which may be taken into account. So all the time there's information about this product flowing around in the system. It's flowing back to the retailers. It's flowing back to the wholesalers, it's flowing back to the manufacturers, it's flowing back to particular departments within the company that made it. And the comments could be positive and say it's a, an excellent design and well done. Or it could be this product could be improved as follows. And there's also, as I said, feedback from people who see the product and, and see it working or see it in position and who give feedback and say that the product is suitable or it's not suitable. It, was, it represents good value or it doesn't represent good value. So all the time there is information flowing around about the product. Now let's talk about the, the personal influences in a little more detail. Personal factors are important and must be taken into consideration during the purchase decision-making process. Clearly, it's an individual who purchased the product, and individuals have personal factors. These factors can range from economic, social, to psychological, and so on. Uh, personal factors tend to be unique to the individuals, and these include demographic, their age, their occupations, uh, where they live, um, their, their particular circumstances. So it could be demographic. It could also be situational. What situation do they find themselves in right now? Have they got a young family? Uh, are they retired? Um, what is the situation? Are they working for a, a company and perhaps the company is under threat of closure? So the situation that they find themselves in will also be important. 
and the involvement the involvement with between the purchasers and the sellers how involved are they in in the the decision making process how uh what sort of information do they rely upon and what involvement have they got with other people who have made similar purchases who may influence the decision there is involvement at various levels that need to be taken into account and of course economic uh, how much does it cost what are the present circumstances of the individual in terms of income or security of income as I said earlier uh, the situation could be that the company is facing redundancies now this will influence the decision of course let's look at each of these in a little more detail and uh, run through them so we'll start with the, the demographic uh, these factors may take into account the customers age the gender race ethnicity income family life cycle and occupation there are all sorts of issues that needs to be brought in under the, the demographic factor and these will all influence the purchase decision um, there's no point in selling uh, very modern perhaps music to people who are retired there's no that effort may be uh, waste uh, that's not to say that all people of a certain age will not like modern music but the majority may not like it um, some people will have lower incomes so it's pointless trying to sell them a luxury car and so on so demographic factors need to be taken into account an individual's age uh, an impact on their preference and buying choices they make uh, so it has an impact um, the younger people have different requirements to older people older people uh, may want to purchase holidays whereas younger people may want to purchase furniture for their house or for their home younger people may may need uh, items for children older people want to enjoy their retirement so there are different categories of consumer so younger adults have different likes and interests compared to customers say over the age of 65 a customer's preference uh, may change as their age lifestyle has a, a direct association to an individual's lifestyle so the lifestyle changes as we move through life our requirements change what we want changes uh, the type of products we want change and this must be taken into account in marketing as individuals pass through different stages in the life cycle their views their preferences their hobbies and activities they all change so that people in their 60s looking back to when they themselves were in their 20s will just about recognize themselves they have changed so much age and lifestyle has an impact on the customer buying behavior and must be taken into account so lifestyle life cycle is very important in determining the demand for products and determining the sales of a product family life cycle is another important factor which marketers must consider um, family life cycle is is extremely important um, we have different stages in the family life, life cycle from single to couples uh, couples who perhaps are married or unmarried or divorced uh, people cohabiting and the products that they need will be different to uh, other people they may, may uh, may have children and they will require uh, products for the children the fact that they spend on the products for the children means that income is no longer disposable 
that lot is no longer available to them to spend on something else. They must budget. So we expect people of a certain age in certain circumstances to have different priorities to people say later in life or even much younger in life. As families grow and introduce uh, children, the impact there's also an impact on buyer behaviour. Uh, children have a major impact on buyer behaviour. They need to be uh, sent to school, they have equipment to buy for school, uh, they need to be looked after and clothed and fed and so there is a reallocation of budgets. Now there are extra people sharing the budget. That means that the individuals who uh, earn the income for the family, all of that income is no longer available to them to buy what they want. There is a, in a sense, a family, a family compromise that's required. Um, even something like buying a car uh, can be influenced by family. Uh, the type of car purchased. Uh, it's impractical for families to buy two-seater sports cars. Perhaps what they need are larger family cars. So again, a compromise. Occupation also impacts on buyer behaviour. A teacher and a plumber will have different, will perhaps have the same salaries. However, the teacher will purchase formal wear, uh, formal clothing for work, whereas the plumber will buy a uniform and uh, heavy duty clothing. So, uh, what people work at will also determine their expenditures. Disposable income impacts on consumer preferences. Couples with families purchase items and furniture for their homes, whereas customers in the age of say 45 to 65 and who, whose children have left home, they may purchase luxury items, for example holiday packages and uh, luxury items, even luxury items of electronics and uh, luxury items for the home or perhaps even luxury, more luxurious cars. So disposable income is also linked to demographics. Now situational factors, well situational factors are present uh, which impact on individuals uh, purchase decisions. Situational factors are important. Uh, the factors that are pressing and in the minds of the, the purchaser at any one moment. What is it they need to take into account? Generally speaking, the external factors are external circumstances and conditions that are beyond the individual's control and which impact on buyer behaviour and purchase decision. But generally speaking, ex uh, situational factors are outside of the control of the, the purchaser. And these situational factors can arise at any time during the purchase decision-making process and can result in shortening, lengthening or termination of the decision-making process. They can arise at any time. For example, a family holiday may be cancelled due to a family member becoming ill. So, a situational factor. It, it was unforeseen, but it just happened. An employee travelling to work may have to temporarily use public transport if their vehicle is broken down or is um, taken for service. It's situational. It, it was outside of the control of the individual. And yet it impacts. It impacts on purchase decisions. Risk of redundancies, as I said earlier, uh, or uncertainty about job prospects can deter a customer from making long-term purchase commitments. Uh, they simply work in, in, a, in a company who 
uh, is going through bad times they're not getting the sales or uh, they're victims themselves of globalization and undercutting cheap products coming in from overseas or whatever and suddenly these people's jobs are at risk <clears throat> they're not going to commit to big items of purchase it's a situational factor so they can occur right throughout the uh, buying decision process and have an impact on the organization as it creates uh, uncertainty we live with uncertainty uh, as I said earlier the situational factors are outside of our control they just happen illness happens um, job security uh, for a long time the company is doing well and people are working happily for the company and then the company goes through a bad time it was it just happened you could say perhaps it's the product of bad management it should have foreseen and and so on but nonetheless it happens so we live with the uncertainty that these things can happen and that is always present when we're making big purchases situational factors can dramatically increase sales for example if the product supply is low customers are inclined to purchase large quantities so if we know that something is going to be in short supply we want to buy more of it just in case so we know a certain type of foodstuff is going to be in short supply or go up in price dramatically in the future it may preempt purchases it may, it may lead people to make purchases additional purchases that they wouldn't have otherwise have done again it's a situational factor <clears throat> for example when supplies are limited in fuel or milk or bread or toiletries this results in an increased demand uh, if there's a warning that there's going to be a shortage of petrol then queues will build up at petrol stations people looking for petrol now levels of involvement well a purchase decision is influenced by the level of involvement a customer invests in purchasing a product or service so it depends on the amount of research that's required it depends on the price of the product how much of the budget has been allocated to purchasing this product but if it's a significant sum it'll require research it'll require some background work to try and determine whether this product is good value or not so the level of involvement is dependent on a, a customer's interest their emotional attachment and time invested in the search process of course their involvement is a function of their desire to have the product an individual's level of involvement in purchasing uh, a product depends on the time invested in researching and information search the more they are committed to buying the product or the more interested they are in the product the more involved they are with the the purchase decision and and the involvement they've got with the product the more that is intense in their mind the more searching they will do the more researching of the product they will do um, and the more information they'll want about the product low levels of involvement including include purchases of daily essentials or low priced goods and services so they're not really involved with it uh, people buy a bottle of milk uh, it's a routine purchase they're not involved with that uh, it's it's routine they, they just pick up a bottle of milk or pick up some bread from the from the the shop but if they're going to buy uh, a computer they may become more involved they want to know what the technical specifications are and what it can do and how fast is the computer and what's its storage capacity and so on they become much more involved and that may be 
a function of the, the cost of the product, the price of the product. So high levels of involvement is linked to high priced luxury branded items. For example, the purchase of a car on finance requires a long term commitment. Electronic goods, uh, for example I just gave you was the computer, uh, fashion items and clothing all require high levels of customer involvement. They become involved in the purchase, they, they research it, they, they're interested, they, they perform significant amounts of search looking for the, uh, the best product. Economic factors, well the economy has an impact on consumer behaviour and purchase decisions. Countries that are struggling through a recession or economic downturn will see changes in customer buying behaviour. Um, when a country is going through a bad period, when there's a lot of unemployment and uh, very poor levels of economic growth and uh, stagnation in many markets, then individuals will be reluctant to make purchases. In fact, individuals may not be capable of making purchases because they may be the victims of the downturn. They may have lost their jobs or uh, lost their incomes. Some may even lose their savings. An individual's disposable income will affect their attitudes and preferences. Willingness to spend on luxury items will be restricted. So economic factors have a major impact on purchase decisions. Economic conditions put uncertainty about employment prospects and can put pressure on customers to postpone the purchase making decision. So if they're uncertain about their jobs, about the future of the business or the company they work for, the future of the sector, the future of the country, they may put off making purchases. They don't want to go out and, and make a big item of purchase by a new car because they're unsure about uh, will they have work in, in the next few months or the next year? Will the company exist? What will happen to the country? What will happen to rates of interest? What will happen to costs? What will happen to the demand for the product that the company makes? So economic factors are very important in the decision-making process. The purchase of a car or a house is a long-term commitment and people need to have confidence in their work, in their careers, they need to have confidence in the economy and in the government, they need to have long-term confidence in, in all sorts of areas of their economic lives before they make a commitment to purchase, let's say, a house or a car. These are big items of purchase. Customer needs and necessities become more important than the purchase of luxury items. Emphasis placed on price and value from under money under economic circumstances. So when there is a worry about the economy or about employment or about people's careers then they will pay more attention to the essential items uh, food housing uh, they will look after the basics they will not consider luxuries they don't consider buying a luxury car or spending a lot of money on jewellery or on uh, fashion clothing people tend to revert back to the basics and make sure the basics are correct. It's in a sense almost a bit like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. They go back to the base to make sure that the fundamentals are in place. Once the fundamentals are fixed then if the conditions improve they may move up to looking at other items. I mean that's an analogy with with uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. but. As far as we're concerned here, uh, there's certainly a switch towards the more basic items if there is high levels of uncertainty about employment or about 
the future of the economy. So these are some of the factors that underpin the buying motives uh, of people. And as you can see from this class, just what 66 slides, 67 slides, it's extremely complex. And it's not as simple as saying as the price falls, people will purchase more. Perhaps sometimes uh, economists who have very powerful techniques in terms of supply and demand, but perhaps they are making it too simple. Just simply to say as the price falls, people purchase more. There are many other factors that need to be taken into account. And all of these factors uh, need to be uh, explicitly addressed and taken into account in particular by the marketing people within businesses. Of course an economist would say well these are just shift parameters. This is what will cause the, the demand curve to shift outwards or inwards. Uh, which is true. So in a sense the economists have covered the possibility. But as we can see making it explicit as we've just done in these slides makes the purchase decision a very complex decision indeed. But that's all we're going to deal with in this session. I'm going to leave it at that and say thank you for watching.